Hello everyone. We have completed chapter one. We are moving on with chapter two. Chapter two, the uh, chapter, the name of the chapter is Surah Bakra. That's the Arabic name. The English name for Surah Bakra is uh, the Haifa or cow. Now, this chapter has 286 verses. The first chapter has 7 verses. This one has 286 verses. So it's going to be impossible to go through 286 verses in one video. But the chapter is divided into sections. So what we're going to be doing is, we'll be, we'll be doing a section at a time. Some of the sections are long, some of the sec sections, are, uh, sections are shorter. So, um, in fact, in this, in this chapter, the verses are, some verses are very long. So, we'll uh, be doing sections at a time. And then we'll be trying to get, just to speak about it, just get, extract a little information out, out of it. But when reading this, uh, because I'm reading it in English, I mean, reading it to you in English, you already understand what God is saying. So I just do a little bit extra try and, and to make you understand more what, 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 what is said in the verses. However, that won't be necessary for all the verses because some of the verses is, is straightforward. It's straightforward. It's, it's, it's telling you good, bad, whatever the case may be. However, this chapter starts off with abbreviated letters, three abbreviated letters. The first the first verse in this chapter starts with the three abbreviated letters. And uh, in this in this chapter uh, we, we in all the chapters we start off with in the name of God most gracious, most merciful. However, only the very first chapter, in the name of God most gracious, most merciful, is part of the chapter. The rest of the chapters throughout this last testament, which is the Holy Quran, in the, in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, is at the top of the chapter, but it is not uh, counted as part of the verses, excepting for one, and that is later on. I think it's in the, I think it's in the ninth chapter, the repentance, where that one is, is, is doesn't start with in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. However, let us carry on. Now, these are. This chapter starts with the three abbreviated letters that I said to you. Alif, Lam, Mim. It starts with these uh, abbreviated letters now. These abbreviated letters, uh, it can refer to God. It can refer to Ga uh, Gabriel. It can refer to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It can refer to the good and the bad, it can refer to um, the fall and the rise of nations. There's many uh, information one can extract from these verses. But my, but why I, why I am doing this is not to give you a history lesson. Why I am doing this is to speak to you and say to you what God is saying in this last testament, which is the Holy Quran, because lots and lots and lots of people, lots and lots of people, English speaking people and, and, and all and uh, people from all from all races and all tribes and everything, they only believe to a certain point. You have people only believing, for example, your Torah, then you have people only believing what is written in the okay, those people who believe what is written in the Torah, you have people that believe what is written in the Bible. And then you have people like myself who believe what is written in the Torah, what is written in the Bible, and what is written in this last testament. So I, I I'm covered. I'm covered. I'm covered. I believe in the Prophet Moses, I believe in the Prophet Jesus, I believe in Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So 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 I believe as God wants me to believe. And this is my message. I want you to believe the same because we need to get onto the straight path, and the straight path is going to guide us to heaven. So that is where we need to we need to get to. And because I love you, I want you to go to heaven, and that is why I'm doing this. 
So let us go to the to the next verse. The next verse. This is the book. In it is guidance, sure without doubt, to those who fear God. So what God is saying is that when you fear God and you and, and you worship God the way God wants you to worship Him, automatically uh, God gives you guidance. Automatically God gives you the strength to to uh, to watch your tongue because the tongue can say many things. The tongue the tongue is a dangerous weapon, and you know once you've said something with this tongue, you can't take it back. So, so God gives you the strength to guard your tongue. God gives you the strength. God gives you guidance of how to, how to live, how to interact with people. And God gives you uh, good conduct. And you develop piety by doing this. So we'll carry on to the next verse. Who we'll believe in the unseen and and who believe in the unseen or steadfast in prayer and spend out of what we have provided for them. So, so God is saying, who believes in the unseen, steadfast in prayer, and spend out of what we have provided for them. So basically what God is, is, is saying to us here now is, those people believing in the unseen, uh, believing in the unseen is believing in God, but you can also take it as, um, Your wealth that you've earned, your house, your car, your clothing, your monies and everything that you've earned, that you've worked over the years and you've earned it. You as a person, you believe that the only way you've earned it is because God has, because you work hard for it, but it came from God. You work hard for it, but it came from God. You believe that this is what God has given you. You are steadfast in your prayer. You pray. You pray to God. You ask God for guidance. You ask God for everything. And you are a person that are not miserly. You spend from, from all, from what God has given you, you spend it on yourself. You spend it on your children. You spend it on your wife. You spend it on your parents. You spend it on your siblings. You spend that money because this is what God has given you. You're not miserly, and, and uh, well, it doesn't say hoarding money, but hoarding money is not good. So you're not miserly, and you spend your money because this, you believe, came from God. And you believe in the, re the revelation sent to thee, and, and we believe in the revelation sent to thee, and send before thy time in their hearts have the assurance of the year after. Now, I just spoke to you now. I said to you, I believe in the revelation. I believe in uh, Prophet Moses and I believe in the revelation sent in the Torah. I believe in Prophet Jesus. I believe in the revelation sent in the Old Testament. I believe in Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I believe in this whole, in, in this last testament, the Holy Quran. But now when I say I believe in them, what I'm saying is, I don't believe in, in them. I, I, in other words, I believe they are prophets of God, but I worship God alone. I don't know, we do not worship man. We do not worship Moses. We do not worship Jesus. We do not worship Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We worship God alone, but we believe in all the prophets that God has sent. And these are only mentioned three prophets. There are many prophets that God has sent, but these are the three familiar prophets that, uh, prophets that we all that we're all familiar with. And then God says here, yeah, now if you believe in the in, 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 in the revelation sent before your time, God is speaking about the Jews and the Christians, and you believe in this final revelation, then you have the assurity of the year after. So you have to believe what God is saying, you have to believe in this last testament. You have to believe that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the final messenger. If you don't believe like that, okay, I'm not God, I cannot say, I cannot say who's going to heaven, who's not going to heaven. I'm not God, I, I don't have the power of that. God alone has the power of that. All I'm saying to you is, what God is saying in this, in this last testament, that you have to believe 
and you have to believe in Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the last messenger and that you believe in what is written in this last testament of the Holy Quran. And like I said to you, in my introduction, you need to go to the video of the introduction, then you'll understand more of what, what I'm speaking about. They are on true guidance from the Lord, and it's these who will prosper. So God, so God is saying that those that believe in all the prophets, they believe in all the books, uh, the holy books that were sent, they believe in the teachings of the holy books, and they believe in the final testament, the holy Quran. God is saying, let's read again, let's see what God is saying here. God is saying, they are on true guidance, God will guide them, God will guide them, and these are the ones that will prosper. It's a, it's, it's, it's a bitter pill to swallow if you're not if you're not a Muslim. But my job is not, my job is not to tell you things that you want to hear and to tell you nice things that you want to hear. If I'm going to be doing that, then I'm showing you no love. The only way I can show you true love is by speaking to you about this book and teaching you about this book so that you understand what, is need, what needs to be done to get onto the straight path to get to heaven. As to those who reject faith, it is the same to them whether thou warn them or do not warn them, they will not believe. Now, God is speaking here about people who reject faith. God says, whether you speak to them, whether you preach to them, or whether you don't preach to them, they will not believe. They will not believe. You can stand on your head, they will not believe. Now, we don't know who those people are. God alone knows who those people are. And please, don't you be one of them. I beg of you. God would set a seal on their hearts and the hearing and on the eyes is a veil. Great is the penalty they incur. So what God is saying here is God has set a seal on their eyes, on the hearing, on their heart. Great is the penalty they incur. So let's just read this again so that I, I, I need to read it for myself so that I can speak to you better and explain to you better. God hath set a seal on their hearts and on the hearing and on the eyes is a veil. Great is the penalty they incur. So, so, so God says he set a seal on the ear, on the heart, and on the eyes is a veil. And great is the penalty they incur. So what God is saying, that they don't hear you. It's not even like when you're speaking to someone, or preaching to someone, that it goes in here and goes out there. No, no. With these type of people God is speaking about, it doesn't even go in here. It doesn't even go in here. So, so, so this, this is very sad because I'm a, because in this book, this book is filled with love and compassion and I am a compassionate person. I love people and I wouldn't want people to go, people not being able to go to heaven. I, I wouldn't want it. I want each and every body to go to heaven and that is why I'm doing this. And God is saying here that these type of people, you can preach or you can speak. They don't hear you. They don't see you. They don't, they don't hear you. They don't see you. Because he set a seal over their hearts. And this is, this is actually very, very sad because, because our life in this world is short. We're living in this world in a manner to attain the year after. And this is very sad, and that is why I'm sharing this with you.
We have done seven verses, which is the one section. That's the video for to the, 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 the video for today. We will carry on with the next section on next time. That'd be good. And why am I doing this? Because I genuinely love you. Bye bye.